All righty. Um, hello, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us for this webinar today, the third part in our Kelly and Peacock webinar series. This time we're going to be focusing on the Laikipia Plateau of Kenya, uh, which is one of my personal favorites um, of the world. Um, my name is Jesse Bly. I work for Emerging Destinations. We represent cool companies and cool places. Um, take a second to jot down my information. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have, send digital information, um, or even do private webinars for you and your team or even your clients. So I'm here to help. Uh, please let me know um, if I can help with anything at all. So it's just jesse at emergingdestinations.com. Before I have Kath from Kelly and Peacock Safaris jump on, I just wanted to touch on the Emerging Destinations portfolio. So not only do we have the pleasure of working with Kelly and Peacock Safaris and their two sister companies, the Elowana Collection and Sky Safari by the Elowana Collection um, in both Kenya and Tanzania, we also have a wonderful, wonderful portfolio in South America that includes um, Terra Nova in Costa Rica, the Guyana Tourism Authority in Guyana, Hotel Las Torres and Fantastico Sur in Torres del Paine National Park, Cruz Andino in the Lake District of Patagonia, Jungle Experiences on the Peruvian Amazon, and Grand Hotels Lux in Uruguay and Argentina. Um, our polar portfolio consists of Adventure Canada, in the Canadian Arctic, as well as Iceland Pro Cruises and Iceland Pro Travel in Iceland and Greenland. Then lastly, uh, also on the continent of Africa, we have Eco Training in South Africa, and then Adventure Consults in Uganda and Rwanda. Um, so we have some really cool companies and really cool places. So if you have any questions on any of the um, cool companies in our portfolio, please feel free to visit our website, emergingdestinations.com, or send me an email, jesse at emergingdestinations.com as well. Uh, before I uh, have Kath jump on, I just wanted to let you know that we are recording. So if you need to step out at any point in time during the webinar, I am recording and you will be receiving a, a playback of this webinar. Also, please be sure to type through questions. You can do that on the GoToWebinar control panel, so type those through. I have Kath joining us all the way from uh, Nairobi, so she will be sticking around and answering some of those questions. So please take advantage of her knowledge and type all the questions that you might have uh, through the GoToWebinar control panel. Uh, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and hand everything over to Kath. I hope that you enjoy learning about the Laikipia Plateau of Kenya. Uh, thanks, Jesse. Uh, it's nice to be back. Um, today we're going to be covering the Laikipia Plateau. Just a little bit about Kelly and Peacock. We are a DMC based in Kenya and Tanzania. We also offer safaris in Uganda and Rwanda. We've been in operations for 35 years this year, and we specialize in exclusive bespoke safaris. In Kenya, we prefer flying safaris. In Tanzania, we have a our own fleet of road vehicles. So we do road and flying safaris. Uganda and Rwanda is, is a combination of both. A little bit about me. Um, I am the product manager. I have the lucky job of going to all of these lovely places and making sure that the experience is up to standard. That's me enjoying the lovely Loisaba Conservancy that we are about to learn about. Great pools, by the way. Anyway, there are my contact details in case you have any questions or want to get in touch with me at any point. So, Laikipia. The Laikipia Plateau is an extremely vast wilderness. It sits about 250 kilometers northwest of Nairobi. It is on the equator and it sits between Mount Kenya and the Aberdare Mountains on the eastern edge of the Rift Valley and then drops to the north, rolling into the semi-arid areas of northern Kenya. Laikipia is fast becoming one of Kenya's most popular safari destinations. It offers unri an unrivaled combination of abundant wilderness, incredible scenery, and cultural diversity. The area also offers a, a cooler climate because of its high altitude, between 1,800 to 2,000 meters above sea level. And because of this, it has a low malaria risk. It caters to all guest preferences, from a wild to a luxury safari, with extensive activities and incredible conservation success. 
as you can see, um, Lycopia does consist of numerous locations. Today, we're gonna to be covering um, these eight areas. There are many others. So if you have heard of anywhere else or you want us to cover anything else, please do get in touch and we can definitely do that for you. So um, and up until the 1980s, Lycopia was mainly ranch land um, used for cattle farming. Um, the large population of black rhino in the area and the need to protect them resulted in two conservancies, Solio and Lewa, spearheading conservation in the area. The success of these conservancies, as well as the need to conserve the wildlife within the area, has resulted in the majority of the previous ranch land being converted into ecotourism-focused conservancies, community-owned group, community -owned group ranches, or working ranches with a wildlife conservation focus. Lycopia consists of rolling hills and high plains. The natural vegetation is that of grassland, savanna, open woodland and forest. The area's temperature is usually around 25 degrees. Um, it varies very little. It does get quite cool in the evenings um, with July and August being cooler months. Rainfall um, in Lycopia follows the normal Kenyan patterns of our long rains in April and May and the short rains in November. It's important to note that some properties within Lycopia do close in April, May and November, so just check that before you book. Um, the wildlife in Lycopia, after Savo, it has the most extensive, it is the most extensive wildlife haven. Uh, it forms the larger 56,000 kilometer Iwaso ecosystem which includes the Samburu and Shaba, Shaba areas that we discussed in our previous webinar. The wildlife densities in Lycopia are second to that only of the Masai Mara ecosystem, and it is home to the Big Five, as well as the Special Northern Five. Half of Kenya's endangered black rhino population lives in Lycopia, as well as a large elephant population that is second only to that of Savo. Um, from the Northern Five, there is a large concentration of grevy zebra and reticulated giraffe in Lycopia, as well as a thriving African wild dog population. The Lycopia experience is incredible. It's not a place where you spend a lot of your time in a safari vehicle. Um, as they are all conservancies and not national parks or reserves, they aren't limited to game drives and on-road game drives. So guests within Lycopia can explore on night game drives, off-road game driving, guided bushwalks, mountain biking, horse riding, camel trekking, fly camping, walking in horse safaris. Honestly, the opportunities are just endless there. It's, it's a safari playground, if you will. On top of this, the cultural experiences available in Lycopia are incredible and very authentic. You'll see there on the bottom right, those are Samburu children. The Tribes uh, within Lycopia are Samburu, Maasai, and Pokot mainly. They are very heavily involved in the conservation and uh, tourism ongoings in Lycopia. So guests are provided with privileged access to the cultures and customs of these tribes. So the freedom of safaris in Lycopia, as long, along with all of the extensive activities and the low malaria risk, make it an incredible safari de destination for families especially those with young children, as well as multi-generational multi safari groups. A very unique aspect of every Lycopia safari is the opportunity to experience and be part of the world-renowned conservation projects of the region. From the anti-poaching sniffer dogs, which you'll see there on the top left and bottom right, to collaring of animals, tracking them, you'll see there on the bottom left, and visits to Conservancy headquarters where you learn about all of the pro projects and how they conserve the wildlife of the area. So starting off in uh, Loisaba Conservancy, this is a 50,000 acre wildlife conservancy and working ranch. It is a critical piece of the Lycopia wilderness as it connects Lycopia to Sambu and Isiolo, which provides a crucial wildlife and livestock movement corridor. There are two permanent rivers and numerous permanent springs in Loisaba, and this attracts wildlife year round. It is home to more than 260 species of birds and over 50 species of mammals, including elephant, buffalo, zebra, giraffe, and a thriving cat population and growing wild dog presence. 
Loisaba as incredible landscape, but is also famous for its skyscapes, as you can see there, absolutely stunning views. It is accessed by Loisaba Airstrip, which with scheduled light aircraft flights from Nairobi daily. Uh, you can also have a charter flight. Road transfers from Nairobi are five to six hours, but as I mentioned, we prefer flying safaris as the roads are not of great quality in Kenya. Activities on Loisaba, day and night game drives, bush walks, mountain biking, horse riding, camel trekking. You can also um, do incredible helicopter excursions from here, which I'll talk about later on, and visit the Conservancy headquarters and experience the anti-poaching sniffer dog unit. Loisaba is best for families and for romance. I say this because of these star beds, as you can see there on the top right. Um, Loisaba provides an exclusive safari experience because within these 57,000 acre, acres, there's only three properties. They are all part of the Elowana collection. Um, the luxury option is Elowana Lotto Springs Loisaba on the bottom left image there. Uh, this is newly opened and uh, is very exclusive with each uh, each booking being given a private vehicle and private safari guide. Luxury to mid is Elowana Loisaba Tented Camp and Elowana Loisaba Starbeds. So the Starbeds are a unique concept. Um, there is a covered area behind this, but the beds, uh, the beds are wheeled out under the stars uh, for guests to enjoy a night out in the wild. We would recommend combining a stay of one or two nights at the Starbeds with a further stay of two to three nights at either Lotto Springs or Loisaba Tented Camp. Um, Loisaba Starbeds is closed in April and May. Moving on to Lewa and Burana conservancies. They are two conservancies uh, that were previously separated by a fence. However, they have now dropped the fence to become Kenya's largest rhino sanctuary, which is a total of 93,000 acres. Um, the area is categorized as a key one population, having more than 100 black rhino within it. On top of the rhino population, uh, the ecosystem offers the big five, extensive bird life, a thriving cat population, and is home to 12% of the world's grevy's zebra population. Lewa and Rana are accessed by Lewa Downs Airstrip, which is where the scheduled flights go into, as well as Burana Airstrip, but this is only for charter flights. Activities are extensive here, including horse riding and camel trekking. You can also track rhino. Um, they collar some of the rhinos and you, and you can track them and walk with them. Fly camping, quad biking. Uh, Burana has an incredible uh, shamba, which is a, an organic garden that you can visit and um, pick your own food. And then they have cook a nice barbecue on the river for you. And then uh, you can to visit the Conservancy headquarters and also the anti-poaching sniffer dog units. Uh, the Garandara forest is a beautiful, beautiful forest with the crystal clear blue springs that people can swim in. That's a nice day excursion that you can do and also helicopter excursions. I would say Lewa and Rana is ideal for rhino viewing. Um, it's absolutely phenomenal. Also families, multi-generational safaris and small groups. So for accommodation in these areas, I've split it up into two sections. Uh, this is the lodges. The next one is the exclusive use villas. So um, luxury lodges, Sirakoi, Lewa Wilderness, Elowana Kifaru House, those are all on Lewa. Luxury to mid, Lewa House, Elowana Safari, Lewa Safari Camp, and those are on Lewa with Barana Lodge on Barana. Uh, it's important to note that for guests staying at either of these conservancies, if you are to go into the neighboring conservancy, you will have to pay additional conservancy fees. And also during the last week of June every year, the Lewa Marathon is held. So this does get, is a very busy time of year on these conservancies and wildlife viewing can be disrupted. Moving on to the exclusive use safari villas, they are absolutely phenomenal. They are all located on Burana. There is Arijiju, which is the top left, Laragai House, which is bottom right, Lengishu, top right, and Sirai, which is bottom left. Unbelievable exclusive safari experiences, um, good for families, groups, you get private everything, it's just unreal. 
Moving on to Old Pejeta Conservancy. This is a 90,000 acre conservancy. It is one of the largest in Lake Kipia and also one of the busiest conservancies. Um, it is close to Nanyuki. It does get a lot of domestic tourism as well. Um, it's an incredible conservation success story. Old Pejeta used to be a working cattle ranch in colonial Kenya, um, and it is now a, a not-for-profit conservancy providing the largest rhino sanctuary in East Africa. It's home to the, large, the last two remaining northern white rhinos in the world and the only place in Kenya to see chimpanzees in a sanctuary re rehabilitating animals rescued from the black market. It is still a working ranch. So as you can see in the bottom left images, by day you'll see cattle grazing um, on the savannah. They are guarded by, by herders. And at night, these cattle are herded into mobile enclosures, protecting them from the conservancy's predators which is one of the highest densities in Kenya. Access to Old Pejeta is Nanyuki Airstrip. It's an hour's drive away. Uh, you can charter flights into Kamok Airstrip. The activities are day and night game drives, bushwalks, sundowners, mountain biking. You can also track lions again here, the collared lions. Horse riding, you can do it on the plains or you can do it with the rhinos. Uh, the chimpanzee sanctuary that I mentioned, anti-poaching sniffer dog and cultural community visits. Olpegeta is best for families and conservation enthusiasts. Accommodation is luxury to mid Olpegeta bush camp, a sanctuary tamborare, which is soon to be open, and Kicheche Lake Kipia. Mid is Perini Rhino. It's important to note that all of this, these accommodations are luxury safari tents, so not suitable for those that like solid walls. Olpegeta bush camp does have safari bucket showers as well, that's important to note. And the activities offered by Old Pejeta Conservancy, which is the horse riding, the um, behind the scenes tours for the sanctuary and the rhino, the white rhino visits are on, subject to availability and they have scheduled timings. Old Malo is a 5,000 acre privately owned family ranch. It has been home to the Frankums for decades. It sits to the north of Lake Kipia and overlooks Samburu land and Kenya's wild north. It is a very intimate and personalized safari experience and a true East African adventure visiting Old Malo. Um, it is home to an abundant wildlife and offers dramatic scenery and extensive adventures. Uh, access to Old Malo is Loisaba Airstrip, with which is scheduled flights. That's a 40 minute drive to Olmalo, or you can charter a flight into Olmalo Airstrip. The activities here, day and night game drives, guided bushwalks, sundowners, horse riding, camel safaris, beautiful fly camping setups that they do within the ranch. Um, they have an incredible leopard hide sleep out that you can go to and spend the night out there in the wild. Um, ranch visits, you can see how they operate the ranch as it is still a working ranch and they offer incredible helicopter excursions as well. Omalo is good for families. The Frankham family have young children that also live there, so they know what is best and what children enjoy. And good for adventure enthusiasts and multi-generational multi safaris. The ranch is home to two properties, uh, Omalo Lodge and Omalo House. It also offers Omalo Nomad, which is an incredible tailor-made adventures into the mountains and valleys and deserts uh, of Kenya, northern Kenya. Uh, either by helicopter on a walking safari supported by camels or on horseback. This is an incredible way to give back to the Samburu community. The walking safaris supported by camels are carried out with the local Samburu people and through the work of the Samburu Trust, this helps conserve the area and their livelihoods. Important to note that Omalo is closed in April, May and November. Moving on to El Karama. It is a 14,000 acre family owned working ranch. It has been home to the Grant family since 1963. The Conservancy offers extensive wildlife, including elephant and a large cat population, as well as beautiful views of Mount Kenya that you'll see there at the top. It is an ideal safari experience for young ones. Uh, Sophie Grant, who is uh, the owner's wife who lives on the property, and, and her children all grew up there. They know exactly what's good for children. And El Karam offers an incredible bush school that looks after kids all day. They do poo safaris. They do molding animals out of clay, cooking lessons, visiting ra the ranch, learning about the little animals. Um, 
visiting veg visiting the the shamba which is the vegetable patch um on top of that did fly camping that you'll see there they have these incredible suspended tents so you're not actually touching the floor it's a, a lovely experience to share with your kids um access to el karama it is one of the closest conservancies to Nanyuki. So you fly into Nanyuki airstrip and it's an hour's drive from there. You can also charter a flight into the Alcarama airstrip. As I mentioned, it is best for families with young children um, and also for adventure enthusiasts. Accommodation on Alcarama is in Alcarama Eco Lodge, which is a beautiful, uh, rustic and very homely lodge. Completely eco and all of the food there comes from their organic garden, their meat comes from their ranch. It's it's a lovely experience there. Um, it is one of, as I mentioned, it is one of the closest accommodations to Nanyuki. So it is a budget friendly option. You can shed, get, catch a scheduled flight in and it is um, very reasonably priced uh, for families with young children. So bordering El Karama is Seguera Ranch. We are now moving into two conservancies that I, while they have a good wildlife focus, they are um, still being built up with regards to wildlife. So we prefer to offer these property, these conservancies for those with more of a relaxation or wellness in mind on their safari. Anyway, back to Segera. Segera is a uh, 50,000 acre private wildlife sanctuary. It's home to only one property and it's owned by Jochen Zeitz. Uh, it has been rejuvenated from a working cattle ranch to a wildlife conservancy. They did this by uh, dropping their fences and opening migration corridors. It is now home to lion, leopard, cheetah, elephant, buffalo, wild dog, as well as reticulated giraffe and Grevy's, Grevy's zebra. Um, it also has extensive bird life. Access into Segera is Nanyuki Airstrip, which is a two hour drive, or you can charter flights into Segera Airstrip. The only property on Segera is Segera Retreat. They offer incredible activities. You'll see here um, the cinema projected onto their, their wine cellar. They have incredible uh, Nepalad bird's nest, which you'll see at the bottom, which is uh, essentially an adult tree house. Uh, it's beautiful. You can sleep in um, under the top, which is there. You'll see there with the curtains, or you can sleep up at the top, which is completely open. Um, you spend the night there. It's very romantic, very pretty. They have an incredible spa there. They also offer uh, cons conservancy uh, visits. So you go and you experience the anti poaching sniffer dogs. You can visit. Uh, the only fem the first female ranger team, which is there, that's pictured there, they are incredible. Um, you can do helicopter excursions, wine tower pairing dinners in that beautiful wine tower that is pictured up there. They also have a gym. And they are a satellite of the Zaitz Museum of Contemporary Art Africa. So for all the art lovers, there is extensive art throughout the property that is also for sale. Um, should you wish to take anything home with you. Uh, as I said, this is best for relaxation, wellness, conservation enthusiasts, art enthusiasts, and multi-generational safaris. This is Segera Retreat. As I mentioned, it is uh, opulence and it's just incredible. They, are, they have villas, um, which are one-bedroom villas, or they have a family villa. They also have Villa Segera, which is two bedrooms, and then this is Segera House which is three bedrooms. So there are options for families, groups, uh, couples. It, it's open to all. Um, important to note that as this is a conservancy that is just up and coming, the wildlife can be harder to spot. So that is why we recommend it for more of a wellness uh, relaxation retreat than a wildlife viewing experience. So moving on to Olentile Conservancy, it is a 40,000 acre private wilderness. Um, to the north of Lake Kipia. It offers in incredible views of Mount Kenya, the sacred mountain of Ololokwe, the Matthews Mountains and Kurosia Hills, as it is towards the north and looks to the north of Kenya. Um, it's home to elephant, grevy zebra, leopard, cheetah, hyena and wild dog. And um, it is an incredible example of communities conservation coming together for, with tourism. 
basically uh, the investors, Jill and John Elias, purchased the property and have donated it to the community. So all funds raised go directly to the community. And um, they've done extensive community work, including building four schools, supporting a further 10. They've built a hospital with mobile clinics. Um, and all employees of the lodge do come directly from the community. So they do benefit from every every uh, guest that, that comes there. Um, Los, uh, Olentile is accessed by Nanyuki or Loisaba Airstrip, uh, which is a one or two hour drive. You can also charter flights into Olentile Airstrip activities. Um, Olentile is designed around the ethos of doing as much or as little as you want. As I mentioned, this is another property that, that we recommend for more relaxation and wellness, as wildlife can be harder to spot at different times of the year. They offer unlimited spa treatment, uh, beautiful yoga sessions with Jill, um, who is the owner. Uh, they also do the safari activities, get day and night game drives, guided bushwalks, sundowners, camel trekking. Um, and as I mentioned, their, their community work, which you can go and visit. And uh, it's just, it's an incredible uh, way to see uh, conservation in action. So as I said, it's best for relaxation, couples, multi-generational safaris. Uh, you'll see couples, why I said couples. That is the uh, sanctuary at Olentile, which is the only property on the conservancy. Uh, that is the airy house, which is one of the four exclusive use villas. This is the one bedroom house ideal for, for couples. There's a round bed and everything. <laughs> There's also a, an outdoor bath set in the rocks there. It's absolutely stunning. Um, the property is set on the top of a hill, so it is important to note that there are numerous steps to the main areas. So for those who are a little bit out of shape or don't enjoy climbing stairs, um, you just mention that to us and um, we can put them in one of the lower, lower villas, which has direct access, uh, so it won't be an issue. Um, the exclusive use villas come with a private butler, valet, safari guide and private vehicle so it, again this is a, a property that we would say is more for relaxation and exclusivity uh, to get away from it all so uh, i spoke a bit about helicopter excursions uh, lycopia is an incredible base to explore the northern parts of kenya that we spoke about in our previous webinar which is Iwaso Niro, Mount Ololokwe, Lake Lojipe, Suguta Valley, and Lake Tukana. But if you have guests staying within Lake Hippia, there are extensive helicopter excursions to Mount Kenya. You can go on scenic flights, you can land up there, uh, go fly fishing. They've got wonderful trout fly fishing. You can stop up there for picnics. It's, it's beautiful. And all of the properties that I've mentioned here uh, do have uh, facilities for helicopters to land there so it's a wonderful base for those. Um, as I mentioned Lycipia is very large we've only covered eight conservancies there are numerous others that offer extensive experiences you can do walking safaris supported by camels not staying at any other lodges just completely tented um, with no access to mobiles or wi-fi or anything to get off the grid you can go on horse safaris combining fly camping in numerous lodges there's extensive rock climbing opportunities, and also you can climb Mount Kenya. Important notes for Lycipia, the whole area is serviced daily by scheduled flights to only three airstrips, Nanyuki, Lewa Downs, and Loisaba. So we do recommend uh, charter flights to the other conservancies uh, that don't have access to these three airstrips. However, uh, if you have a budget conscious safari that you're looking at, a cost friendly alternative from char to chartering flights from Nairobi is getting a scheduled flight from Nairobi to Nanyuki and then chartering a flight from Nanyuki to one of the conservancies, which does reduce costs significantly. Uh, for Lycipia itineraries, because Lycipia provides extensive adventures outside of the safari vehicle, um, guests usually like to combine something like this with uh, extensive game viewing. So we would say like Kipia and the Masai Mara is a perfect combination. But also what we've now uh, found is that not a lot of people enjoy beaches. So as I mentioned, the, uh, the conservancies with more of a wellness and relaxation focus, we've started combining the Masai Mara to get the game fix. 
and then Lycipia for groups that would like, if some would like to continue the safari experience, it's available to them. However, if they would like to do as little as possible and enjoy spa treatments and beautiful views and swimming pools, Lycipia is a wonderful uh, opportunity for that as well. Any questions? Alrighty, um, I had several questions come through um, while we were doing the webinar, so I'm just going to get Kath um, to get back on. Um, again, everyone, thanks so much for joining us. This webinar was recorded, so if you um, you know joined late or you had to step out for anything, I will be sending you uh, the webinar recording. Um, I'm just going to pull up the questions tab. If you have any more, please type those through. Um, just one moment while I get Kath unmuted. There she is. Hey, Kath. Hi, everyone. <laughs> um, thanks so much for staying up late. Um, it must be quite late there, but these are um, some really great questions, so I won't keep you guys on for much longer. Um, I just want to uh, ask Kath a few questions while I've got her on. So um, first of all, we have a lot of feedback about um, the informative presentation, so everyone, um, Thank you so much for your wonderful feedback and thank you, Kath. Let's start with um, our first question. Do you need a yellow fever vaccination to visit any of these areas that you mentioned in Kenya? Uh, Jesse, I'm just checking that you can still hear me. Kenyan internet is good. somewhat. Okay, <laughs> good. Um, so uh, yellow fever vaccinations are required for people traveling from certain countries. Um, I will uh, ask Jesse to maybe share our documentation with you, but anyone who is traveling from the United States and from the United Kingdom, um, it's not required to present it, but we would recommend as many <laughs> vaccinations. I will send Jesse the medical, uh, our medical advice as well, but there are certain uh, vaccinations that we do recommend, um, but, uh, vaccination yellow fever is not rec is not required unless you're traveling to other areas within eastern africa got it um is there an age uh an age requirement at el karama do you know that yeah no there isn't so um el karama is an incredible property because um as i mentioned the owners uh, live there with their children so they are trying to make safaris accessible for children of all ages um and tailoring the activities to those children so no any children from as young as you want to bring them on safari which <laughs> i recommend doing <laughs> uh they're good to come perfect um so th that's a very broad question obviously we're um in a tough time right now but kelly and peacock has been doing a great job of um just updating us with their newsletters on what properties are closed due to the pandemic, um, which ones, um, you know, are closed until further noticed or closed permanently. So um, I think I'm pretty much on the right track. Do you just want to comment on um, that broad question, Kath? Yeah, sure. No worries. So, um, yeah, I mean, everyone's facing very unprecedented times now, but um, the majority of properties in Kenya throughout Kenya have actually temporarily closed. Um, they do have skeleton staff there uh, just taking care of things and they are ready to reopen as soon as borders reopen and everyone starts traveling again. Um, in the interim, they are working on um, sort of post-COVID uh, health and safety measures and all of that, which we will be announcing soon on, in our um, newsletters. Um, but yeah, they are closed currently, majority of them, um, until further notice. Yeah, of course. Um, I'll take this last question. Um, can you elaborate more on fly fishing in Kenya? Um, I know you briefly touched on it. You were able to do it um, for one of the um, helicopter excursions, but can you elaborate a little bit more on fly fishing in Kenya? Yeah, sure, no problem. So um, Mount Kenya has incredible lakes um, on, on the slopes. So uh, the fly fishing, uh, the, the trout in the area is, is world renowned. I personally do not fish, but apparently <laughs> it's very fantastic fly fishing. And they are, uh, they're helicopter excursions. So you go from where you're based to wherever you're based in Lycipia, you get in a helicopter, you do a scenic flight of, of Mount Kenya, 
you land there and you can fly fish in one of the lakes with beautiful views over Lake Hippia, have a picnic breakfast or, or lunch, whatever time you go up there, depending on the weather. And then you return to your accommodation. That sounds awesome. Yeah. Um, all right, I don't want to keep anyone on too much longer. Um, Kath, thanks so much for your time. Everyone that's still on, please head over to the Emerging Destinations website under the webinar tab. Kath is doing uh, numerous uh, webinars with us. This was the third webinar in our Kenya series. The next Kenya uh, topic that we'll be covering is the marvelous Maasai Mara. So if you have any interest in the Maasai Mara, head over to the Emerging Destinations homepage and register for that webinar. Then after we complete um, the Kenya portion, we will be moving into Tanzania. So the Tanzania Southern Circuit, uh, Western Circuit, and Northern Circuit. Um, and we've got um, a special one coming up on uh, exclusive private safaris, just with how the industry is changing um, due to this uh, COVID. Uh, so we will be elaborating on how you can um, accommodate those guests wanting something more exclusive, private, um, and stuff like that. So again, emergingdestinations.com, head to the webinar page, sign up. Um, but Kath, thanks so much for staying up late. Really appreciate it. Um, everyone will be getting a follow-up with a, answers to the Q&A and a playback. And I'll also send you the links to sign up for the webinars as well. Um, thanks so much for your time today. And thanks so much, Kath. You're welcome. Stay safe, everyone, and I hope to see you in East Africa soon.